Milwaukee's the only undefeated NBA team in 2022-23 as of this recording, and we can't forget this Bucks team not only won 2021's championship, but had the number one defense by far in 2022's playoffs, of course all without Chris Middleton, an all-NBA caliber wing stopper. Even the Greek Freak's off nights are stat sheet stuffing masterpieces, which is exactly what happened against the contending caliber Trey Young led Atlanta Hawks, as Giannis seemed to have a rough showing but still finished with 34 points and 17 boards. Giannis has now posted four straight games of 30 plus points and 12 plus boards and scored the most points over a four game span than he's ever put up before. Drew Holiday also had 34 points in that aforementioned Atlanta outing, at one point making 10 field goals in a row. That snapped a cold spell for Drew, but it shows you how the best guard defender in basketball can at times be capable of stepping up into the number two scoring role. Drew struggled with his efficiency against Boston in last year's second round, but still averaged 21 points, six boards, six dimes, and 2.4 steals in that Celtics series. Brooke Lopez shot an unacceptable 7% from three in that second round, but in terms of this season, the Brooklyn Nets franchise scoring leader is looking fully healthy and making 35% from deep on 7.4 three-point attempts per game thus far. Lopez has also been the best paint protector in the association. It's too early to make concrete predictions, but the Bucks look like early 2023 title favorites. Before continuing, just 9% of you watching this video are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Also, please leave a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference and takes just a few seconds. For NBA edits, follow at Hoops on Instagram. Now into the content. While Giannis is known as the greatest downhill attacker the game of basketball has ever seen, a man capable of taking two strides from half court and throwing it down like he's MJ in Space Jam, over the last half decade, he significantly developed his all-around repertoire. Since Giannis was a skinny, raw, vaguely skilled role player in his rookie year, he first developed his handle, then he improved his slashing footwork, then it was his postgame, then it was his facilitating awareness, but now elevating is his jump shooting touch. We're evaluating an extremely small five game sample size, but so far Adetokounmpo's made a decent six of 17 three point shots and is averaging 3.4 triples attempted per game. Giannis is making 35.5% of those three pointers, currently a better percentage than fellow MVP candidates and Europeans, Luka Doncic and Nikola Jokic. We say this every year when Giannis has decent three-point efficiency to begin a season, but Adetokounmpo having a jump shot that defenses even somewhat have to respect is terrifying. At that point, as a defender matching up with him, all you can do is pick your poison. From that mid-range, aka 10 to 16 feet area, Giannis has been inconsistent from year to year. He shot 42.2% from that area in his sophomore year back in 2014-15 but just 28.8% the next year. He shot as high as 43.3% from 10 to 16 just a few years ago in 2019-20, but that fell off by eight percentage points the next year. He shot 41.6% from 10 to 16 last season, but in 22-23 so far, he's shooting just 27.3% from that mid-range area. However, in addition to his three-point percentage being at a career-best 35.5% clip thus far, proof of Giannis developing his overall shooting touch is the fact that his efficiency from 3 to 10 feet is at a career-best 47.2% clip. Giannis is also shooting a career-best 86.5% from 0 to 3 feet. All of these numbers are potentially inflated because of the small sample size, but fact of the matter is, we haven't even seen the best version of Adeta Kumpo yet in terms of him finding the best overall instinctive flow, and he's still the second leading scorer and rebounder across the association. Even Giannis's misses from beyond the arc still show off a much more fluid release than we'd been accustomed to. The endless three-point reps that Giannis has been putting in show up in his fundamental elbow out and L-shaped trigger combined with his follow-through. In terms of his all-around bag, with Giannis's Shaquille O'Neal-esque postgame slash generationally great-esque slashing offensively, and with his rangy ground coverage slash rim protection defensively, Adetokounmpo earns his nickname of the Greek Freak. Speaking to Giannis's ability to close out games, he's the only player in the NBA averaging at least one point per minute in the second half of games. Trailing him in that stat category are elite players in Shea Gilgis-Alexander, 
Ja Morant, Trey Young, Brandon Ingram, Stephen Curry, and Kevin Durant. From a team perspective, the Bucks' current personnel from top to bottom features rebounding prowess up front with big Bobby Portis and of course Brooke Lopez, top-heavy talents with Giannis, Drew, obviously at full strength Middleton, and grizzled depth with talented floor spacers like Grayson Allen, Jordan Nwora, Wesley Matthews, and at full strength Pat Connaughton, who are complemented by glue guys like George Hill, Serge Ibaka, and Javon Carter. Milwaukee's main core makes it easy to see why the franchise won its first title in half a century, two and a half years ago. They're a mentally strong group who evidently play for one another every night, and that resulted in a well-deserved championship ring. Giannis certainly had an all-time great, never-to-be-forgotten playoff run, but a man who doesn't get enough credit for his elite two-way contributions is the UCLA product, Drew Holiday. Kevin Durant may have been wrong when he said he didn't want to be compared to Giannis, but KD was definitely spot on when he called Drew Holiday the best guard defender in basketball, with all due respect to Boston's reigning DPOY, Marcus Smart. Drew's not the flashiest player on or off the court, but he's one of the hardest working guys in the NBA, whose grit and grind mentality makes me a big time fan of his. While Giannis leads the 2022-23 Bucks in scoring and rebounding, Drew leads the Bucks this season in dimes and steals. Meanwhile, two-way stretch big Brooke Lopez leads the team and the NBA in blocks. Lopez is also tied with Detroit's Beef Stew to rank number one in the association in contested shots with 90 altered attempts already. Lopez leads the Bucks conference rival in the Nets in total franchise points and no Brooklyn players catching him anytime soon, as we can't forget how good of a player this man was in his heyday. Brook was the Nets' number one scoring option for around a decade from 2008 up until 2017, and was considered one of the best bigs on the planet during his prime. I personally remember him tearing apart the Raptors anytime we matched up with him. After starting 5-0 with Ws over Philly, Houston, New York, Brooklyn, and Atlanta, the Bucks now take on the Pistons twice at Pfizer Forum, travel to Minneapolis to play the T-Wolves, fly back home to take on OKC, then it's a rematch against the Hawks, this time in Atlanta. Based off those, for the most part, extremely favorable matchups in the on-deck circle, it's foreseeable that it could be a 10-0 start for this Bucks team. What will be the Bucks' record after 10 games in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out and the top five commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's speaks winners are firstly TJ Views, who says, I feel like the Portland Trailblazers can be a wild card team and could end up possibly surprising people if they keep this play up. Anything can happen, but I would not be surprised if they really do great this season and put themselves in contention this year. And secondly, it's a revolutionary exchange productions who says my worry level about the Warriors defense is zero. They've had one of the tougher schedules so far. They also know that what matters is the end of the season and don't want to waste too much energy on games that don't matter. They'll ramp it up by playoff time. Also, Kerr is experimenting with the rotation and hasn't figured everything out. Once that's more solid, players will be more able to relax into their roles and trust their teammates. It's just early season stuff. You don't get extra points in the standings for holding your opponents to fewer points. You just have to get more than them. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.